It is. It is. I'll stop this. It's one. who now? It's what now? <laughs> it's Christmas 2022, and you are listening to the future of photography. <laughs> the future of photography. Oh man, what a day. This is, is one of the rare times that uh, Adrian and I record in the morning and not in the evenings. And, and it's going so well. Doesn't. Things things don't work as expected. Um, so this is <laughs> the second time's the charm. We are um, Chris and Adrian. Jeremiah is still on a ship in the Antarctic. He's still in the cold with um, penguins. Uh, oh, what's happening? Penguins are in the south and polar bears in the north, right? I so. believe so, but you're the one with the polar podcast. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's true. I do the a Curiously Polar podcast. I've never been in the Antarctic myself, um, but I'm podcasting with Henry and Mario, who, have, who are both uh, expedition leaders, and they've both uh, been... To both poles and uh, that's so, mad to be able to have been to both that's that's amazing but from the one photo i've seen from jeremiah so far it looks um even though it's a summer holiday it does look very cold down there uh, it, i'm pretty sure it is i haven't checked but i don't think i have to check because the antarctic <laughs> is really cold so so jeremiah is on a on a ship uh, on an icebreaker right now with uh, his um fellow travelers um, Again, I don't know how many there are, but um, they are. They have gone through the Drake Passage from Ushuaia in Argentina down to Antarctica, and uh, they will probably be doing lectures on board, like to the days they are they are uh, sailing, and then in between they will be um, going on land in zodiacs to explore, to see, to go and see some penguins that are not not afraid of humans at all because they really don't know humans <laughs> that's cool it does it does sound like an amazing adventure something i would like to do <clears throat> one day but it's uh but having said that it does also sound very cold and so i am quite pleased to be here indoors in the warmth uh, and very Christmassy, as you can see, we have snowflakes up on the screen for those who watch. We have Christmas lights. You have a Christmas tree, even though it's not in the picture, because well, uh, yes, you're probably ashamed of it, right? I'm not. Ashamed, I'm not ashamed of it. It's just we have we have quite a close crop, and it's either you, you get me or the tree, right? <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm very happy to just step off out of hold shot. On, and hold just... on, hold on, I can fix that. You can, I can fix that. You crop put... you. Where's the Christmas tree? Oh, where's the Christmas tree? Oh, I have to get the Christmas tree out now. I think it's just. I I think I think we have to see. I want proof. I want... Oh, there it is. There okay, there's the Christmas tree. But, there is my Christmas tree. Everybody can see my Christmas tree. Now. Okay, and now you now it's cropped out again. Okay, now that was worth it. That was worth it, though. Yeah, it's it's been sat there for the last week or so in in uh, in in all my video calls. You see, so uh, just to just to have a a little seasonal spirit going on. Yeah, yeah, the, not not m much Christmassy goodness in here, other than the green and red lights in the background. <laughs> And a few fairy lights. And a few fairy lights. Well, that's that's yeah. all good. But it's uh, yeah, it is time. It is Christmas time now. I'm very much looking forward to having some time off uh, and a break. Um, I uh, curiously, I have not had so much time off this year. I think in part it's because I spent most of the year just working at home and and i'm not so exhausted as i usually am i'm am definitely ready for a break right now but normally i can only do like three months at full pace before i need to have some time off but i think with less less and less traveling these days uh it makes things a lot easier um so i'm actually looking forward to uh doing some <laughs> photography right so that'd be nice so for the holidays won't it this this camera that i'm staring into right now uh which lives on its clamp uh, on my desk and it's, it's my most used camera it gets used probably for about four hours a day on average you know it's five, the main five camera. days a week but sadly that's not the most creative of endeavors unless you include you know the stuff i make up just to get by professionally <laughs> the, you mean the creative zoom meetings <laughs> well you know it's uh, actually you know what zoom would be a change in the corporate world we mostly use microsoft teams um, which is yeah. exactly Ugh. the same thing they're all they're all the same it's no big deal but it is it'd be nice to get the camera off off its mount uh you know because it's and and just use it and 
Uh, yeah, that's that's one of the things I want to do. You mean you mean use it for its intended purpose? Oh, sorry. Yeah, yes. Well, you know, because I, mean, I mean, we we have, we have we have to be real here. These cameras that most of us now have staring at us from above a computer, um, these have originally been designed to be photo still photo cameras, and then someone came along and tacked on the video functionality, but. Um, they're still in the minds of a lot of people are still still cameras and, uh, well, and then especially and then something well, weird happens and uh, happened and everyone worked on hooking those up to the computer to be looking nicer on meetings and stuff. So, so mine so, especially because I shoot with the Fuji, right? So so the thing that I look at, the camera I look into day after day is a Fuji XT3. Um, which I actually got at the beginning of all the lockdowns. I did have the Fuji X-T1, which served me perfectly well, um, but the uh, couldn't get a clean HDMI feed out of that one, so actually I upgraded. Yeah. Um, and so I suppose you could say I did buy this camera for the video capability, although it is, of course, very much a... Uh, a <laughs> traditionally designed camera um with lots of dials and buttons on it that could be you know uh, for, for people who like a tactile approach to to photography uh but yeah it sits there on its clamp on my desk it's plugged into the mains of course because you, you have one of these fake batteries that that actually plugs into the mains so that you never have to worry about it running and it'll run for hours a day without overheating or anything like that um, it's all good, um, but I am looking forward to actually taking it off, using it. It gets gets dusty. I don't know if any of your cameras ever you get know, dusty. Mine gets dusty because it's running all the time, so there's an electrical charge running through it, so it attracts the dust. But of course, it never moves, so I probably should get a duster and dust it as well. I yeah, for, for me it it's it's similar because what I'm looking into right now is a DSLR, a 5D Mark IV, which is way overqualified <laughs> for uh, for doing what it's doing um but you look lovely, and i'm though, in the <laughs> and i'm in the in the privileged situation from the from the professional stuff and the photo tours that i do have a second dslr that is my uh now my main photo camera so i don't have to dismantle this one all the time <laughs> Yeah, so, do you know I have yeah. been really tempted to buy another DSLR recently. I haven't had one for years and years and years, but just something I don't know, maybe it's just that I want to get something simpler and and stuff like that, you know, just just to be able to point and shoot. I don't really want a DSLR because, you know, for for any other reason then i feel like it might be easier to just point mm. and shoot but it probably wouldn't be. It probably still have too many menus and too many buttons and stuff like that. So. Oh well. well. Maybe I should spend the Christmas holidays reading the manual for my camera because I, I, I do read the, I don't know about you, I do like to read the manuals when I get a new toy because that's how you find out what it's capable of and the things that you can play with. So I actually find that a really nice thing to do when you get a, a new camera or, or any kind of new toy. Do you read the yeah. manuals? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm with you there because um, you miss things if you don't. I mean, lo a lot of things seem self-explaining these days, but... Camera menus are not one of them. <laughs> camera, the, the, at least like the traditional camera menus. If you have, uh, if you have like a new app on your smartphone that is a camera app and does specific things, then that might be simpler. But um, a, a, a halfway decent camera these days has like a million functions that you are, and and that that and not the best usability often. So no. um, you are better off. Uh, spending a nice cozy evening in front of uh, a fireplace. And yes, I need to work out things when I get a new own. camera these days. Didn't used to be a problem, but these days I need to figure out how not to focus with my nose, right? Because all the because <laughs> all the cameras have touch screens. I'm like, why on earth would you put a touch? Why on earth would you put a touch screen on a camera? It's the, it's the same thing. A thing that you deliberately press up to your face and touch all like, you know, it. Like, it doesn't make any sense. You know, to me. they they could learn something from laptop manufacturers because that is one of the one of the big things that they had to learn when making the bigger touch pads on laptops is palm rejection. So mm -hmm. that when you type and you accidentally hit the touch pad with your palm, that the cursor doesn't go all over the place. They could do a nose rejection algorithm. That would be uh, the best use of cameras. AI, right? Right. So nose, we talk I'm pretty about sure AI, if you AI, if you talk to the engineers at Fuji or at Canon, they will have the term nose rejection. They won't even chuckle at it because that's probably what they talk about. Well, yes, it's, it's especially difficult for me because I'm left eye dominant. So I hold the camera to my face in a way, oh yeah one of these in a way Monica is the different. same yeah yeah a different so so I'm not I'm not the norm so I am right handed so the grip makes sense to me but I am left eye dominant 
Um, so that's that's a, a challenge. So so that, there you go. There's my first holiday project: learn how to not focus with my nose. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think that's a that's a, a good goal to have. Although this Christmas I can actually see the screen on the back of the camera, that's good, right? So there's a oh, you had your eyes done because yeah. I had my mm-hmm. eyes done this year, so I can actually focus at a short distance now. So that's Yay. that's nice. So and it so genuinely, especially with little you know smaller cameras where you tend to use the screen rather than the viewfinder, that actually makes that's made a real world difference to me this year um wow. to be a, to being able to actually focus a distance that is less than the length of my arm <laughs> <laughs> or 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 have to do weird gymnastics with your glasses and moving them up and down and sliding yeah and that sort of thing yeah kind of yeah, stuff. So, yeah. yeah. Hmm. anyway well, so we should talk about holiday projects what holiday projects yes. have you got on Well, okay, so let me tell you about a holiday project I did last year, which was that I dug out around 500 slides, old stuff, and uh, some of that was in my position because I shot them when I was like 13, 14, 15 mm-hmm. um, of my little brother um, and the family, but then also my parents had old negatives in the house that like like rolled up like a complete film and cut rolled up in in a little film canister and, nice. uh, and lots of those so i went through those i went through my slides and i packed a bundle of like 500 of them and sent them off to a service to have them scanned um i think we're in- including their handling and their cleaning them and making sure that they get uh, delivered and not lost in the mail um, they had like a, a courier service even wow. um, it didn't it, it cost 500 cost me maybe 100 euros to do and um, I ended up with a digital treasure trove of old children's photos and family photos and um, made that into a book uh, and gave it to family had a few of them printed in larger which was a very this was this was i was i was very proud of myself yeah that's a lovely that that's a lovely thing as it's interesting to know that it's good good to know as well that it wasn't too costly because i think a lot of people think that a project like that is going to be yeah. very very expensive uh, it's, it's not it's not i mean i mean there will be services that are expensive and you can have much higher dpi scans and that kind of stuff but the default stuff and that is plenty good for this kind of a use um, again, 10, 15 cents a piece, maybe. So yeah, it wasn't it wasn't that bad. That's good. And the book is a nice present as well, isn't it? Because uh, I, oh, I, wonderful. I, wonderful. I, I will be doing my normal holiday photographing a family and stuff like that. Um, you know, wearing their silly hats, you know, waving their drinks in the air, that sort of thing. Um, uh, but it's uh, I think I'd like to maybe do something that's a little bit more on the you know, sort of a physical output this year as well for mm. people. I mean, that'll be after the holiday season, obviously, but but it'll be a capture of the holiday season. So, I, I you know, thinking maybe you could do because uh, especially if you do it as a zine, where where the printing cost per unit is is very very low, so you could uh, um, you could send that around to lots of people, family, friends, all, all sorts of people. So. So I'm thinking maybe to do something like that this year, uh, to to as an addition to my you know my holiday photography uh, of, of the family. So is it yeah, it's a good good idea. And then of course then there's a bit about escaping outside. Yeah, you know, when um, you know because things I don't know about your family, but my extended family when we all get together, there's a lot of noise. Um, and sometimes uh, I'm not great with noise. Sometimes I'd rather go, and, you know, have a walk out and about and and see some stuff. So you did, you did have, um, you did. Oh, we were recording this mid December, so a bit ahead of time. So uh, you did have a lot of snow recently. So uh, yeah, well, we've had so, in UK. So so going outside, walking through the crunchy snow that muffles all the sounds, that might be nice. Yeah, that would be. Yeah, so we haven't had uh, so very um, lots of days of of frost building on frost as well, mm. um, and so you know that um, it's been uh, fabulous to to uh, to see crystals growing so really good opportunity for macro photography so i was out the other day mm. and these weird crystals had grown on the car and they'd sort of these ice crystals over several days and they, they were like really pointy right so so they weren't um they weren't crystals on the flat of the car they'd actually grown away vertically from the car very tiny thing uh crystals and um uh but tall and thin like a skyscraper like if you imagine a, a skyscraper so i got the the uh, the macro lens out 
and uh, was taking some photos of, uh, of those lice crystals as well. So that's been uh, it's been really nice here too to do that. And that's the time when you have to uh, the, the, when you see these kind of phenomena. That that's when you can't put it off to another time to take those pictures because that stuff might never happen again in your lifetime like that. So. Um, oh yeah, you do. You you need to be this right. Is, out this there. is this is where you need to listen to that inner voice that's telling you that this faint little voice that goes, "Oh, this looks nice. I should take a picture of that." And then you just to tell the family, "Go ahead, go ahead. I'll be with you in ten minutes. I need to take pictures now." Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, opp opportunistic, but but definitely you need to to focus on that's that how you do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, no, it's it's so so there's lots. It, it's nice you know, for me. It's a, it's a good chance to slow down, uh, which I haven't done much of this year. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's it, good chance to to take a break and and see what's what. Um, and then, and then, of course, also, there's also the the angle of um, what you want for Christmas or to toys that you want to play with. So. Before we get there, let me let me tell you about one Christmas project that I have coming up, which is oh yes. a we which is a weird one. Let me okay, I'll take the headphones off. I can't hear you for a second, so but you can narrate what I do. I will um, narrate. Okay, so Chris is now walking away to the back of his studio. So here I am. With a big box. A big colorful box, yes. It's a wow. wooden box, and inside there is a lot of old stuff. Ooh. And let me... That does look like a little treasure trove. Let me come back <clears throat> and show you some of that. So it has photo-related old stuff in there. And this is 80 years old, something okay, like wow. that. Okay. And it's from an old grand-grand-grand-aunt uh, or something. And um, it has things like this measurement beaker in it <laughs> this uh measuring cylinder from for like proper for, glass for all your chem for all your darkroom chemicals with the right. with the numbers etched in i mean it's really old yes. um and it has little boxes with things in oh, them that's and, a good uh, old-fashioned box that is it a good old several kind. envelopes this one says Vogtlander film um okay. so and inside, and here's some old handwriting on the back that tells you what's in there. And what is in there is... Okay, let me take one out here. Delicate stuff. Glass slides. Wow, glass slides. Gosh, so, okay. Yeah. So this one, I'm, I'm not sure if you... If you I'm not, I'm I can, I can see it, it vagely. There's yeah. a family on there. Actually, the people, yeah. It so you get a, so, wow. so, so ne there negative is glass slides. There, yes, negative of course, yes. glass negatives. Um, so the, it's 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 a film emulsion on glass and in an old camera. The old camera is also in the box. So you've got the camera that shoots those glass plates. Wow. Okay. Wow. Yes, and it it's probably from the thirties, forties, nineteen thirties, nineteen forties, and a bit later. Um, one of the Oh, one of our relatives on my father's side uh, was an avid photographer, and he uh, not not just that he, as you can see, he developed his own yeah yeah pictures. He enlarged his own own pictures. He was deep in that. And this is old family stuff. There's stuff from I've I've held a few up against the light. There's um, some where there's people in uniform, so it's from probably also from war times. Um, I've seen some um, larger ones, bigger formats, probably have been done at a professional photo studio, oh, yeah, okay. but not of people, of documents. So there are some old family documents in there that uh, have been, um, well, preserved, <laughs> like you would with your, with your smartphone. If you want to take a copy of something, you take a quick photo of a document. The same thing, but how, but but with bigger glass slides. So, 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 so from from an age when document scanning was done with glass slides. Wow. Okay, that's that's incredible. So I I don't know what's in there. I, I'm also not a not a historian. So I you are now. Would hope, <laughs> I well I'm I'm the one who takes the pictures. I would hope once they're digitized that someone in the family gets interested enough to do the translations because that's old handwriting and and stuff that is not common today so it's hard to read and 
I that's... I'm not into into genealogy, so I'm I'm I won't do the the family tree and that kind of stuff. That's I always that's have a yeah, bit, I always have privacy concerns about those family tree sites. Yeah, it's like yeah, go putting out all your personal information and putting it on. Oh, and, oh, oh, and of course, give them your DNA. <laughs> that will. Help. Oh, there's that. Yes, that's <laughs> the, the thing these days, isn't it? As well, yeah. But that's amazing. So, so yeah, that's that's quite incredible. Imagine what those the, the photos will reveal and what the, what the documents will reveal. Well, oh, surprises! I'm I'm sure there's some weird stuff in, in, in my ancient uh, family history of i don't know i don't know um as you say you interested. have to find somebody that can actually read it i mean i i remember trying to read stuff as a kid that my grandparents had written in what in 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 english we call copper plate uh, you know cursive mm -hmm. writing yeah. um uh which there's an old old handwriting here called Sutalin, which is an old german type of handwriting that is very difficult to read yes yes um so i'm i'm not sure i'd be able to read something that was written in a formal document or at least not easily um uh in a uh, from, from I, that's that's 80 years ago i guess possibly from 80 years ago i, I maybe could but there's, but there's old difficulty. there's old uh, well most of the people in those photos as far as i could tell well just from their age, they are not alive anymore. Um, there will be a few that have some, that will remember some of that, or at least some of the people on there. So, yeah, we'll see. Um, that's that's what I want to do over the holidays: to digitize like well, it's about about a hundred as is my guess of those, and I'll put these on a little like I have a, a copy stand with a camera pointing downwards and a light table under it, so. It's a fairly, a fairly simple process. Just clean them up, dust them, put them on the oh yeah, I suppose you would have on the light clean, table, yes. set up the camera, and uh, yeah, and take photos. So yes, you know, dust dust them off. Hopefully, they wouldn't be too too dirty. I don't know. Could you? Cause oh, they look you wouldn't want clean, to scrub so. them, would you? Because you might. Um, um, no, it's a blower. It's more of a blower ah, and a okay. soft cloth. Um, very, very delicate, but <clears throat> they look very good. They yes. are not dirty or anything. Because if the emulsion, I mean, the picture is is in the emulsion, isn't it? So it's sitting on top of the glass, essentially. Yes. So you could easily you could easily damage the image with. Yeah. Yeah, it's, vigorous it's, it's, cleaning. it's a gelatin. It's a gelatin layer with the. Uh, silver crystals embedded in it and that is very dry and is fairly robust so it's, oh, it's okay. not that it's it's not that with one touch you just i suppose they have it. lasted 80 years or more so so yeah that's, I and they've been packed tightly so there's no uh ozone that has uh, crept in and de de degraded the photos or no uv light that has degraded anything it's been in a dark box so um, they be, look. They look good. Um, and and, and what whatever, whatever is broken, that can probably be fixed digitally if I want to. So, hmm. there Int we go. That's my project. Interesting stuff. Yeah, that's that's um, that sounds like a fun thing to do. I look forward to seeing you know what you get out of that. You'll have to share one or two of the images and uh, you know. Oh, will will do. Will do. Um, it'd be it'd be funny if they like everybody's wearing Christmas hats because it was a Christmas uh, yeah Christmas photo or something like that. That I would be so. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't seen any from the few that I plucked out and had a look at. No, we have uh, the photos that we have of that sort of era in my family. Very few. Well, my grandfather was a keen photographer even as a teenager, so he has some stuff from the nineteen thirties. Just one or two, one just one or two though. But it's all. Um, uh, that it, it's great to see, but there's nothing. There's nothing frivolous. So photography wasn't a frivolous thing. It was a scarce resource at that point. At least yeah. in our family, it was. So, um, it, so yeah, it'd be interesting. Okay, all right. So, um, good projects. Good time for projects. Good time to to get presents, um, receive presents, to buy yourself presents. Because let's face it, we're all pretty picky, aren't we, when it comes to to these sorts of things? I don't know about you, Chris, but I'm not sure any of my family would know particularly what flavor of photography gadget or gizmo to buy me. Um, uh, that at least not with the, not without asking first. <laughs> so, yeah. so what are you, it's, it's... what are you looking at? What have you got your eye on this Christmas? If, 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 uh, if Santa was going to be good to you, uh, or, uh, and, and had been sort of reading your brain waves, uh, which probably Monica is probably is quite good at. Uh, what, what what would you would what would be on your Christmas list of wishes for for camera stuff and oh for camera stuff or photography okay. stuff. Um, sorry, um, photography, um, other things. Now, <laughs> photography wise, you know, 
I'm not for, for some reason I, I don't have any gear envy this year or any like lenses or accessories or nothing I Good um, for you. That's I'm I'm okay with what I have, which is if you look at the at the current market is is not what everyone else now wants. Um, I'm still on DSLRs. I'm not on the mirrorless ones. There's a fairly like a uh, Monica has an Icon Z6, I think. So a fairly recent. Um, mirrorless camera so there's a mirrorless camera in the house um, but I get everything out of the DSLRs that I need so don't have a need and it's mo mostly on a need basis these days that I buy photo gear it's uh. less on a want basis more on a more on a yeah this solves a problem for me and I don't, don't really have big problems at this point mm -hmm. other than at one point they're probably going to be too heavy and I'll be looking at lighter Gear not even, not even a tilt shift lens. We know, we know you have a, a soft spot for tilt shift lenses. Or uh, well, okay, so, 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 of course, what what is also true is that if I went mirrorless, then I'd want a tilt shift lens for that camera with that mount, which is not available in the camera ah, okay, okay. anywhere else. So, so um, that would mean I could keep using my tilt shifts with an adapter, but that would make everything bulky again and negate some of the advance advantages that I have going mirrorless. So th that's another thing that's holding me back. It's like, mm, no, not really. It's, that's, it, well, well, it's, it's a good so, package so, right now. And I do have all the, all the tilt shifts that I need right now. So. <laughs> So it's that's that's good to hear, right? Because so often people do you know, want stuff. Um, I'm I'm definitely not immune to to wanting new stuff. You know, one of the things I've done over the years uh, is rent stuff. You know, mm -hmm. for for the holiday period, um, because it's it's often the case that the rental houses shut down, so you can get a a good long holiday period rental for actually you know what for you know. Uh, just an amateur uh, or an enthusiast is actually really good value for money. I've done it in the past uh, to uh, to try out um, bigger, more expensive lenses, like, you know, the sort of pro telephoto f2.8 kind of things um the that you that for me personally i would very much want to do, try before i buy right um uh, i did it one year i got both what was at the time both the fuji 16 millimeter primes um one is a a smaller f2 i think or maybe even an f2.8 um uh and and one is a larger you know um at 1.4 or something like that. I, I i don't even know and i thought you know what i'm quite fancy buying one of these lenses but i don't know which one i'll rent them both over the holidays i'll play with them both and i'll make a decision and my decision was at the end of the holidays was neither of these lenses are on my camera anymore so i'm not buying either of them so it's, well it's like i couldn't get through a 10-day period shooting with that focal length so i thought well do you know what maybe i don't need that lens after all that was money well spent i think yeah. one of the one of the things i learned over the years is that um it's often helpful to just sleep over something for one or two nights before you go and do this impulse buy that you might yeah regret because you never use it having that said i'm i'm also uh, i i th this sounds very like cold-blooded and very like hard-boiled and yeah i know that um and then probably there will be a kickstarter next week that i'll go ooh, 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 i probably <laughs> have to back that so there's a good chance that i'll be um contradicting myself in a few weeks from now so but at this point no need for anything. Yes, actually, it's a good point you remind me. I do have a Kickstarter that I've backed, which I will hopefully be receiving in, uh, I think they're scheduled for March. In fact, I've got the beta unit right Do you want to share desk. what it is? It, it is It is the Alfie camera that we've talked oh. about on the podcast before. This is a yeah. half-frame 35mm <laughs> camera. Uh, the difference being from most modern, it, it's just, it's, you know, milled from aluminium uh, and uh, it's got an electronic circuit board in it that actually, so it's got electronic uh, shutter and, uh, you know, automatic exposure and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. uh, so we've talked about that before. Um, I have got, I should, should 
should remember I've got one of those coming in the not too distant future. I must give that beta unit back to Dave, actually. I hope you'll probably be going very annoyed with me by now because I've kept it for far too long. Um, so, uh, the, so, so I do remember that. I have to say that there's one thing that's caught, one thing that's I'm thinking of at the moment, and this is maybe a variation on the hiring thing or the renting thing, um, is that there it is to try a different type of lens, but as a as a second hand purchase, and then you know if I don't get on with it, to to sell it on again afterwards. Um, particularly, I've always been curious about lens baby lenses, and I've never had one. Um, and so I'm I'm pondering perhaps that like Chris is now looking around and he's going to just pull one out of a box somewhere and go, oh yeah, here's one of the five lens baby lenses that I own. I have I have two. Two. Okay, two. two. <laughs> Too, but not not none in reach right now um so so that's something that's in so i am thinking of this i'm thinking okay well i could justify buying that and playing with it and if i like like it i could keep it right and it's it's it, it would be a used lens so it's it's not full price and then find a find a muse lens baby oh, do, do they still do it i don't think they do the muse anymore they they have a, a the squeezy one that's the that's the one to get that's they, they have one, the one that you can get. move around that you can do all the shifting uh on sorry tilting on yeah rather than but shifting. the muse is so much more organic let, let me let me find oh no the spark spark 2.0 that's the one you want oh okay. okay that's 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 the one that has the squeezy tube and 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 you you hold the camera with two fingers in the back and the lens in the front and then you squeeze yeah, it yeah. and you get the focus and then shoot video with it because that is total fun that's <laughs> see that does so that does sound fun i think for you know whether or not that would end up being for me a bit of a gimmick or not i don't know i am still in a phase where i'm i'm wanting to to produce very graphical imagery rather than precise imagery so i think i am at a part i'm at a time in my evolution or, or life cycle or, or uh, as a photographer where a lens like that would make sense with the sort of images i'm trying to produce right now i've seen your first zine and uh it would fit right in 100 percent, yes exactly and it, these, these lens babies are lenses that i don't use a lot but when i use them they give me all the joy i want well, there, there you go. So, so, and Christmas is a time for joy, right? So, um, yeah, I know we're supposed to buy presents for other people, but <laughs> so, oh, okay. I think it's perfectly okay to buy presents for yourself. Well, occasionally. This is the spark. Yeah, something like that. Okay, so yeah, and a, a very, a very simple, straightforward. Well, maybe not straightforward in terms of engineering, but a sim simple and straightforward to use. You, know, you know, put the lens on, bend, bend it around a bit, and find a shot that you like. So I think they have. I'm not sure if they still do that one, but um, the Spark. Do they? Yeah, you can you can get it for maybe Fuji X mirrorless mount. Oh, so there okay. you go. Well, there we go. There you go. No excuse. <laughs> no excuses now. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. I was going to get a second hand one, but uh, yeah, well, we'll see. See what I can find. But that that's the sort of thing that um, uh, is is something that i'm i'm intrigued with to play i mean it's, the other thing about you know, this is it's not necessarily just about lenses you i've i've rented uh I've rented cameras in the past i've rented lenses um you can always try lighting and other accessories as well if you if you've got a project that you want or if you uh, to do over the holiday time or even if you just want to experiment so let's say you've not done much flash photography in the past uh it's very simple to to rent a couple of flashes and a couple of soft boxes for the holiday period and and you can play till your heart's content um that's always good fun as well so uh, that looks like a good transition into our picks i think it does yeah especially mine actually because uh, my picks so we, we both brought two this. picks so you get to do the first and then i get to do one and then you get to do your second and okay okay well you're, you're you're the man with the web pages that are going to pop up which one are you popping up first i'm popping up this one Okay, this is uh, this is a company called HireACamera.com, um, which is a company that I have used in the past for hiring cameras and lenses. Um, they have a Christmas shutdown period this year of twelve days, I think. So their version of the twelve days of Christmas is that you you <laughs> you, you basically get twelve days of rental for I think two days of cost, something like that. Um, this is one example, and it's one example that I'm happy to give because it's a camera that I have used success a uh, camera a company I've used successfully in the past. Um, are they, they international are, or? I don't know if they do international. I mean, um, yeah. because they're. 
you know, I, I use them because they're not too far away. Um, yeah, this looks like it's it's uh, UK centric. It is but a then UK. There's lensrentals.com. There's in Germany. There are many others. I think yeah. you can rent from Calumet and others. So you, you can there's indeed. Good, yeah. So so I, um, as I say, this one I'm happy to put up and and and, and use as my pick of the week because it is a company that I have used successfully in the past, and so I'd be confident I'm not leading people astray. But of course, there are many companies that do this, and many of which would give you excellent experiences. I am sure. Mm -hmm. But the tip, really, the pro tip here is to. Look Look for ones that have got an extended Christmas shutdown, um, and then you can have lots of good fun with stuff. Wonderful. So my pick is well, it's a it's it's a, it has nothing to do with Christmas whatsoever, other than that this is a really good time to do it. And I, I did a bit of um, let's say house cleaning, but not in a not not with a with a Hoover, but with um, on my website because. I I've I've recently received a question what is it that you do and <laughs> you know there, there's 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 a there's a place where you usually put your stuff on if you if you do things um that would be called a website and that could have things that you have done and things that you are capable of doing like if you're uh if you're available to hire for, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, for yeah, consulting yeah. or training or so on. And I do all these things, but I have, um, I had a bit of a mishmash of websites. So what I've done is, and this is not Christmassy whatsoever, I've uh, taken my website, chrismarkworth.com. It starts with Chris. It, huh? <laughs> it may not be Christmassy as such, but it starts with Chris. <laughs> it has a Chris in the beginning, yes. Um, and, I, and I have put on like the services I do because um, I'm, I do training services for, for for individuals, but also for groups and also for corporations and so on. Uh, done done uh, quite a bit of that in the past. There's um, consulting around, well, what we do here, remote audio video production or podcast production. I've helped several companies um, get their own podcast going. And I've never really formalized it this much. So uh, production services, I've done video production for companies, I've done audio production for companies, podcast production services, that kind of stuff. Of course, I do photography, so I've put that on here as well. Uh, that's the things I can do. And of course, I have references of uh, what I have done in the past, like a list of the clients I've worked with, uh, of, of the photography I've done, all the podcast productions that I'm involved in. Here's the future of photography. <laughs> Um, the books that I've uh, written and co-written, you know, all, all the things that I have, or my CM magazine, which is a German uh, audio written magazine that I'm involved in, and so on. So, yeah, chrismarkwood.com, very, a very simple website, a very no-frills website, um, similar to how I like my photography, no distractions, right? But it's the important stuff in the, no 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 not a lot of ornaments it's a very simple but very functional very seo optimized website so it's easy to find that kind of stuff so i've uh, i've given myself that as a bit of a christmas present to answer to easier answer the question <laughs> what is that what is it that there's a lot do? in that actually then when you put it all together like that you are and and i finally po polymath i think is the word isn't it somebody who does a lot of different things <laughs> well but a lot of different things are very similar like the training services the consulting services they all pretty much go hand in hand i just split them out as a separate thing um so it's easier if someone ser searches for something specifically that they can also find ah, yes yes uh, so that's an SEO measure. And it's, it's, yeah, it's been, it, it, it's been a pain point to have everything in a very well structured way, which um, whatever I did in that respect in the past was not quite as well structured and harder to wrap your mind around. So, um, yeah, that is, that is my Christmas present with no, with no bells and whistles no, just that's a, a good one i like that one i like that one right next up yeah. then it will be my second one i guess won't it your second one okay. is oh i see another oh it it it, it redirected me to the german website and that's okay it. so so this is an international company then so again this is this is company i've mentioned uh probably many times before on this podcast um but it is mpb.com which is an organization a company that now now uh, at least multinationally maybe not globally but um allows you to buy and sell photography and cinema equipment yeah. 
Um, and uh, again, a company that I've used many times uh, and, you know, and are great people. I do actually know a couple of the people that work uh, in the Brighton office, which is where Brighton in the UK, which is where, where the company started out. Uh, they're really nice people. They're you know, super knowledgeable and super passionate about all of this stuff. Um, but uh, there are other examples, of course, of companies that do this sort of thing. But again, if you are looking for something that you want to, to try, um, then absolutely um, you're know, buying it used from a company that will then buy it back off you right is it's not quite the same as hiring um but sort of, in yeah. terms of a business model but it does give you the options to to experience new things um without having to worry about whether or not they're necessarily the right thing for you um and just to have you know just to generally um you know also to if, if you do have that urge to buy new stuff or or even better buy old stuff um like if you want to go back if you're a mirrorless shooter go back to dslrs which is something that i do think about um uh, or something like that then um you know, a good place to 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 go and indulge at least your window shopping um as we say in the uk if not actual shopping <laughs> this one See, what have you found there? A Fuji... Big Fuji non-lens. 200 mil F2? Is that... Yeah, wow. that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a big one. <laughs> that's a big one. That's, that's the sort of lens where you carry the lens and the camera is just attached to the back of it. <laughs> right. All right, so the, the... What's your final one? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a video I came across of a guy who has... Turn off the sound here. Um, of a guy who did an experiment with all those image generation networks, and he faked his life using AI for an entire month. As in, he generated pictures of himself in different locations with different people. With uh, like, he he faked his move to LA. Um, oh wow! With, okay. Like like uh, he he faked an entire bunch of stories t towards his followers his friends his family and so on and then um he explains how he did it and uh shows their reactions when he finally revealed that oh the last month was completely fake okay um, interesting it is it's a very well produced video as well so he ended up um yeah producing a good story around it uh, in, in this video it was a good watch and very just creative. came out the other day and it's 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 amazing how far you can get with these things right now. So that is certainly uh, photo photography related. At least the output of it is. So um, maybe, worth a watch maybe we should cause... fake a vacation in Antarctica and publish it all before Jeremy gets back with his real photos. <laughs> You know, wait, may, maybe we could we could uh, with Chat GPT we could just go and. Uh, make make an entire I've, I've i've listened to at least two podcast episodes now that in the last week that started off with a gpt3 scripted mm -hmm. intro and then they revealed that that was by the way uh not their own script but a computer generated one interesting Interesting. Not that that's going to happen to the future of photography podcast anytime soon. No, Adrian, it is not going to happen for sure. <laughs> I'm just reading the script here. <laughs> yeah, of course. Absolutely. We'll, uh, so, yes, next year, 2023, TFOP will be brought to you by <laughs> AI scripts. And, um, no, properly handmade podcast, and uh, we are definitely real. Trust us. Absolutely. Trust, trust we, us. Couldn't get it, we couldn't get it this bad by, by, yeah, by using an AI. <laughs> Well, so yeah, the future of photography. That's yeah. the last episode this year. Thanks, thanks all for yeah hanging in there, being around. Um, let your friends know. Forward our announcements on absolutely and and happy holidays everybody no matter how you decide to celebrate um i hope you all have a, a good a good time uh, and uh, we will be back in the new year after a short break um, with jeremiah with jeremiah uh, <laughs> at some point with jeremiah assuming he makes it right back. <laughs> other than that you can of course find us online check the show notes for links and um yeah everyone have a good one and bye bye happy new year bye bye been listening to The Future of Photography.
subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. Thank you.